what I am going to do is the following. I will uh, start with uh, uh, a uh, uh, quick review of propagation of light, uh, this uh, and vector nature of light. Uh, both of them are uh, uh, based on the properties of electromagnetic field that we have talked about. And uh, then I touch upon coherence and interference, uh, emphasizing the first part. Uh, I do not talk about things like Young's double slit or um, single slit diffraction, which of course all of you have uh, learned properly from school onwards. I will also talk uh, a bit about amplification of light, in particular laser sources. And uh, also I will uh, uh, try to give some uh, focus some or give some attention on propagation of light in optical fibers. It will all depend upon how much I cover, will depend upon uh, the time that I have in these two lectures. So, let us proceed with that. Uh, so, if you recall, I am um, going to be primarily interested in uh, propagation uh, of light in a uh, non-conducting and uh, dielectric medium and uh, a medium which does not have any uh, sources of charge and current. So, my equations, Maxwell's equations which will be necessary for me will be del dot of B equal to 0, which of course is still true. Uh, but um, uh, in addition today, I will have del dot of E equal to 0, because there are no uh, charge sources. Faraday's law of course remains uh, uh, the same, that is del cross of E is equal to minus d by d, dB by dt. And uh, finally, I have del cross of H. Uh, which is uh, d d by dt. I do not have any current term because there are no uh, sources there. And since I have assumed a linear dielectric and non magnetic medium, Uh, what I have is uh, del cross of H is equal to epsilon 0 d by, it should have been d d by dt, but I have it as epsilon 0 d by dt. So, basically what I have done is to write my Maxwell's equation in, uh, uh, in terms of only these variables E and B instead of bringing in H and uh, this thing. I mean, I will, I will remove that. Uh, uh, H also in no time. Uh, so, uh, if you look at that, uh, what I am going to do uh, is to see how does one, what is the solutions of these equations. Uh, so, I have, supposing I take a curl of this equation, I get del cross del cross E and this I have told you is a very standard uh, uh, thing, uh, which is uh, uh, del cross del cross of E is del of del dot of E minus del square E. And um, if you look at uh, this thing here, uh, that is uh, I have got del cross of E is minus dB by dt. So, um, this is equal to minus dB by dt. Uh, let us uh, Supposing I decided B is equal to mu 0 H. So, I could write this as d by dt of uh, mu 0 and del cross H, because I have taken a del cross of both sides. So, that gives me minus mu 0 d by dt of, now I put this uh, in place of del cross H, I put epsilon 0 d e by d t. Now, I use the fact that uh, my del square of e sorry, this term is equal to 0. So, I am left with since minus sign cancels from both sides, I am left with del square of e is equal to uh, minus mu 0 epsilon 0 d square e over d t square. Alternatively, I mean this is nothing but a wave equation, because I have got del square of E 
plus mu 0 epsilon 0 happens to be as we have talked about several times 1 over c square. So, this is this plus 1 over c square d square e over d t square that is equal to 0. You can check this uh, by putting in numbers also it works out uh, that way. So, the uh, thing now is that I have a wave equation and you could get a very similar equation uh, in. Uh, so, therefore, if you like uh, this quantity uh, he is of course, uh, 1 over c square I have written down, but supposing I had a linear dielectric with uh, epsilon coming in here normally mu 0 remains mu 0, uh, then I would have brought in a dielectric constant into the medium. So, which tells me that my uh, speed of light or speed of the electromagnetic wave in whatever medium I am talking about is given by 1 over square root of uh, mu epsilon. Well, normally it is mu 0 epsilon. So, that was my equation that uh, uh, and this quantity uh, because uh, uh, see the reason why I have not uh, changed uh, I am not particularly keen on changing that mu 0 to mu is because we normally deal with um, non magnetic medium and so therefore, mu remains mu 0, but uh, in propagation of light we are frequently interested in uh, how light travels through for instance glass when we talk about uh, uh, reflection, refraction and things like that. So, therefore, we bring in this uh, 1 over uh, the, the epsilon factor. Now, this ratio of epsilon to epsilon 0 that is permittivity of whatever medium you are talking about to the permittivity of the free space okay, that is the relative permittivity or the dielectric constant. So, therefore, what I have, I have written here is this that uh, we write down what is the velocity of light and it scales according to the uh, as we know that in a medium the velocity of light reduces by a factor of uh, the dielectric constant. So, uh, the by the refractive index and most transparent optical media as I said are non magnetic and so therefore, uh, the index of refraction is square root of k. All right. Now, uh, so when we write down this equation del square u uh, equal to 1 over u square d square u over d t square with the minus sign of course, uh, which has been uh, forgotten here. And um, so, if you look at each component that is whether it is x component, y component or z component, whether it is e or h I have represented by the same letter u. Now, this satisfies this equation, this is what we have seen and uh, the harmonic solution which we are normally interested in goes as some constant u 0 cosine k dot r minus omega t. This k as we know I am going through this section a little fast. Uh, this section this k as you know is the propagation vector whose magnitude is called a wave number. Uh, so, uh, suppose I have uh, constant values of this argument that is suppose k dot r minus omega t is constant. I look at uh, the surfaces yeah, this is a surface this will define a set of planes k, top k, k dot r minus omega t uh, this would represent a set of plane and uh, uh, so this is uh, uh, the way it would be. So, this propagation vector that we are talking about then is normal to the surface of the constant phase and uh, the surfaces of constant phase are normally known as the wave fronts and uh, uh, the uh, and we have said that these wave surfaces they would move in the direction of the k vector with a particular velocity. Now, what one does because dealing with sine and cosine functions um, the uh, they become somewhat difficult uh, because of the fact that uh, sine cosine on differentiation mix up. But mathematically what one finds very convenient to do is to take this expression that is instead of taking cosine or sine of k dot r minus omega t uh, the uh, one takes the corresponding complex uh, quantity uh, the corresponding complex quantity and uh, you would say what is a complex wave well there is nothing 
but what we do is for mathematical simplicity we take this form and later on at the end of the calculation because exponential functions are very uh, you know nice to deal with we simply take the real part of that that is what i am trying to say is my wave is supposing you are taking a cosine function my wave is nothing but the real part of this function because e to the power i theta is cos theta plus i sin theta or you could take a sine function in which case it is an imaginary part of this function. So, uh, what we do is we carry on all our calculations using the complex uh, factors and complex numbers are much easier to deal with complex arithmetic is much easier than sin cosine arithmetic. Uh, for instance, when you differentiate an exponential function you get an exponential function back but when you differentiate a sine function you get a cosine and vice versa. So, that makes the algebra a little more difficult, but, uh, but this is a very neat way of doing things. Now, let us look at uh, a slightly different function. So, what about cosine k r minus omega t instead of k dot r minus omega t. Now, you can see immediately that uh, uh, just as the k dot r minus omega t uh, had constant value over uh, the wave front that is over uh, a, a surface. Supposing I wrote k r minus omega t. Now, then k r minus omega t at a given time t would have constant value on surface of the radius r. Now, uh, so there is no dot here k r minus omega t, but problem with this function is this is not a solution of the wave equation. If you substitute it into the wave equation k dot r minus omega t is a solution of the wave equation, but k times r minus omega t is not a solution of the wave equation. So, uh, however, it turns out that if you uh, write down the equation in uh, spherical polar coordinates and look at the radial uh, portion, then you would find this to be a solution of the wave equation provided you divide it by a factor of r. So, 1 over r cosine k r minus omega t is a solution of the radial wave equation. So, in principle this wave is, is uh, the, the wave fronts are spherical and it is a spherical wave. Now, uh, so look at look at this uh, structure del square of u is 1 over u square d square uh, u by dt square. Now, suppose I am dealing with plane waves as I said we will take u 0 e to the power i k dot r minus omega t. Now, when I do apply a del operator on it, now uh, if I apply a del operator on it, this is same as uh, equ equivalently as if you are multiplying this exponential with a factor i k vector, because what you are doing is to differentiating in three dimension. So, what you will get is that effectively taking the gradient operator is same as multiplying this with the factor i times k vector. And if you are taking the time derivative, this is equivalent to simply multiplying with a minus i omega factor, because d by dt of that is that, there are some minor sign changes there. So, if you come back to now this equation, del cross of e is uh, minus mu dh by dt. Now, that tells me that since del cross is equivalent to multiplying with an i k, so I get uh, uh, i k cross e and since d by dt is equivalent to multiplying with uh, a minus i uh, times that. So, I would get that k cross of e equal to mu omega h and similarly, I get del cross of h equal to minus epsilon omega e and the two divergence equation del dot of e equal to 0 gives me i k dot e equal to 0 and i uh, k dot h equal to 0, i cancelling out i, I get this. So, you notice i because of the fact that i, I because of two things, one is I decided to use the complex phase part, they, so what I did and, and the secondly because uh, we have decided to look at the plane wave solutions only. Uh, the radial equations as I told you are little different, uh, but then that 1 over r factor is important 
because that is the one which gives you the inverse uh, square uh, way in which the intensity uh, changes in a spherical way. So, uh, the because of these two reasons, my uh, equations which were uh, in terms of derivatives, I got simple algebraic equation uh, k dot e equal to 0, k dot h equal to 0, k cross e equal to mu omega h, k cross h equal to epsilon minus epsilon omega e. So, these are my replacement of the entire uh, set of Maxwell's equation for the case of uh, the electromagnetic waves uh, which are plane wave solutions to the Maxwell's equation and look at these equations. So, uh, obviously, I am dealing with much simpler situation today and, and because of this uh, uh, two things that I did. One is the exponential representation of the um, plane wave solutions instead of cosine or sine. I could not have done that if I had done kept the cosine or the sine because the derivatives would give me complicated results. So, my results are my k cross e is mu omega h, k cross h equal to minus epsilon omega e and k dot e equal to 0, k dot h equal to 0. This tells you two or three things. Firstly, the, the vector k, wave vector k is perpendicular to the electric vector. It is also perpendicular to the magnetic field vector. See, in, while dealing with uh, the electromagnetic waves, people prefer to write take the electric vector E and the magnetic field vector H rather than taking E and uh, D, but it is immaterial there is a factor of mu because we have taken just the linear uh, uh, magnetic media. All right. So, K vector is perpendicular to the electric vector as well as to the uh, magnetic field vector. Now, you look at these equations any of them, it tells you K cross E, e is proportional to H or k cross h is proportional to e that uh, minus e. Now, that tells me that the vector k, vector e and vector h, they form a right handed triad system. That is k cross h e will be in the direction of h, h cross k will be in the direction of e, which is shown with a negative sign because I have written there as k cross h. So, so I have a system in which the electric vector uh, is electric vector and the magnetic vector are both perpendicular to the propagation vector k and the propagation vector k uh, well these form a right handed triangle. Now, look at uh, the ratio of the field the magnetic field h to the uh, uh, electric field E. Now, you can see that uh, we had written down earlier here, um, this is this is what we have got here k cross h any one of them you take. So, if you do that and take their magnitude because now that we have shown that they are they are perpendicular to each other. So, my cross products will not give me any other factor. So, I will be able to write that magnitude of h is epsilon omega divided by k, but omega by k since I am writing down a wave equation is nothing but the velocity of light. Now, mind you I have taken epsilon, so therefore, the uh, I am talking about a velocity in whatever medium we have. So, my uh, definition of refractive index is uh, always the ratio of the velocity of light in vacuum which is of course, the largest value divided by the velocity of light in the medium in which you are talking about. And, and that quantity uh, if I substitute it here, it tells me that h is equal to remember c is equal to 1 over square root of mu epsilon. So, if you substitute it here you find that uh, the magnetic field strength is uh, uh, you know proportional to the electric field strength but there is a factor there which is uh, square root of mu 0 by by z 0 it is reduced and that amount if you can calculate it is normally called the impedance of uh, the medium or vacuum in this case and its value is very close to 377 ohms. All right. So, having done that uh, we 
recall that we had shown that the time rate of flow of the electromagnetic energy per unit area is given by the pointing vector. So, S is equal to E cross H and, and S specifies both the direction and the magnitude of the energy flux. So, let us look at uh, this pointing vector which is giving me information about the energy transport and let me talk about it for the case of plane electromagnetic wave. For the case of plane electromagnetic wave, I have taken E is equal to its amplitude E 0 and uh, we have said cosine k dot r minus omega t and h was correspondingly this. I could have written down in exponential notation, but in this case it is not necessary. So, if I take E cross h, so I get E 0 cross h 0 because these are the directions of the vector, uh, the um, uh, times cosine square k dot r minus omega. So, if I am looking at the time average of the pointing vector, if I am looking at the time average of the pointing vector, I am going to get uh, S is because we know cosine square or sine square uh, functions of time on an average has a value half. So, therefore, the average pointing vector which is what we normally are interested in is given by half E 0 cross H 0 and, and this quantity. Uh, is what is normally called the irradiance. So, the uh, what we are talking about is you can write it like this. So, we define irradiance to be the magnitude of the pointing vector. The and so irradiance is nothing but half E 0 H 0 and this quantity is given by this. Having talked about the propagation of plane waves uh, in a linear dielectric medium because uh, or air vacuum, uh, they are the same really because all the difference that it makes is that there is a uh, change in the uh, speed of light when it enters a dielectric medium and that is done by a refractive index. There are other changes which we will be talking about later. Let us look at uh, what is this electromagnetic wave which we have taken. We have written this as E equal to E 0 vector exponential i k dot r minus omega t and correspondingly this. Now, we did not quite talk about that uh, whether these things they remain constant or not. All that we know is we have said that they are uh, not dependent on time, but suppose we say that these are constant real vector, these are constant real vector. Then the waves would uh, be called plane polarized wave and, and see why. Because you see, uh, the if this amplitude factor if you like has a constant magnitude and direction. So, this look at this yellow curve, uh, pictures. So, I, I have said that, that th there is a constant vector E and supposing I am taking a cosine or a sine, does not matter then that is why I keep on switching between the two. Then you see the my actual electric field is the direction does not change, but this thing the strength of the electric field gets modified by either a cosine factor or a sine factor and that is the reason which you are seeing it here. And the corresponding red one which represents the magnetic field vector is perpendicular uh, to uh, both the electric vector and the magnetic vector. So, the thing is this that um, we are talking about that such a wave uh, in which uh, now let me let me tell you how does one pictureize this, what is this picture. There are two ways of uh, doing a picture, let me let me though I have written down exponential consider a cosine k dot r minus omega t uh, there the real one. Now, there are two ways you can look at how the uh, wave looks like or how, how do you pictureize that wave. Uh, there is a one picture which I can call as a local picture. What local picture means is that you look at a fixed point in space, but let time vary. Now, supposing you do that, that uh, you say that this is instead of exponential I said you take 
cosine k dot r minus omega k. Now, I am saying supposing you make the position uh, to be fixed. So, in other words the first factor there does not change. Now, what you then do is this that since that factor is not changing that. So, if you are looking at a particular position the electric field vector will then have uh, a variation of the phase factor because of the fact that with time the thing is changing. So, in other words if you concentrate at a particular point in space and look at how does the electric field vary with time, then you will find that the amplitude of the electric field keeps on fluctuating according to a cosine or a sine function that you have taken. Okay. Uh, but the argument of the cosine or sine function is a phase factor which is a constant phase factor because we have said k dot r is constant minus omega t and that is giving you the time variation. So, you will find that direction is not changing, but with time the amplitude is going up and down and oscillating in some shapes. The other picture is what we will call as a global picture. Now, this is the picture that is normally written down here. So, basically in the global picture what you do is you freeze in time. So, you say suppose I look at what does the electric field look like at a particular time, but everywhere in space. So, here is a picture which I am plotting for example, in the direction of propagation. So, we have said here that supposing I say cosine k dot r minus omega t and we say that uh, uh, choose a particular direction of uh, uh, propagation. Now, in this particular case I have chosen the direction of propagation to be the y direction does not matter. Now, when I do that then the picture is because the time factor is now frozen. So, that gives me a fixed phase there and I have cosine in this case uh, k y y uh, minus omega t. So, what I see in space as I go along the propagation vector and supposing I am looking in the plane which contains the propagation vector and the electric field. And this is the picture the yellow picture that I would get. On the other hand if I look into the plane which contains the propagation factor and the magnetic field direction and that the red one is the picture that I would get. So, and it is because of this that there are two um, nomenclatures which are common. Now, one calls them either by the name linearly polarized or by the name uh, plane polarized. Now, if you look at the uh, nomenclature plane polarized, what does it actually mean? It means why is it called a plane? What has it got to do with the plane? So, one is that if you look at the um, direction of either electric vector or the magnetic vectors at various points at a given time. Now, since their directions are remaining the same, they are always contained in a plane and hence the name plane polarized. However, if you are looking at a local picture, I do not have a plane. There what I am doing is to say that I have fixed point and with time my electric vector or the magnetic vector is oscillating along the direction of the electric field or the magnetic field. And so, therefore, the corresponding picture is a linear picture and that is the reason why both the names are interchangeably used. Now, um, there is uh, another form of polarization uh, I will uh, uh, be talking about. The most general form of polarization is the elliptic polarization, but let us talk about uh, the ones which are much easier to draw and picturize. Now, supposing uh, I take uh, two linearly polarized waves now, and both have the same amplitude, but uh, E 1, E 2, but both have the same amplitude. But supposing they have uh, a phase difference of pi by 2. So, what I have done is this that uh, I have uh, a situation where I have taken remember that any linear combination of solution is also a solution. Now, I choose my uh, coordinate axis such that that the two waves the electric vectors of the two waves because I said pi by 2 difference. So, 
uh, they are in the x direction and in the y direction. So, the one component in the x direction, another component in the y direction, but uh, I choose the E 0 to be the same. So, if I do that, the since these two are solutions of the wave equation, the total electric field is also a solution of this wave equation. Now, look at what is this. Now, supposing I look at this plus this, this is also a wave. The suppose, see notice, supposing I had uh, a cosine here instead of a sine, then I would simply say this is uh, I e 0 plus j e 0 times the cosine, but all that it means is your direction of polarization has now shifted from one of the axis to 45 degrees. 